Hi, welcome back to my channel. And for today's video, we will be revisiting the radical expression. So if you are new to my channel, don't forget to click down there for you to subscribe. In that way, you will be able to be updated of a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon. And enjoy watching. Okay, so for today's video, uh, we will be discussing about the radical expression. So what is really a radical expression? So a radical expression is an expression of the form, this one here, where x is an algebraic expression and n is a positive integer. So in this case, uh, let's consider for example, um, we have this. So 3x is an algebraic expression here. So the entire thing is also an algebraic expression. In this um, specific algebraic expression, we call this as radical expression because we have this of the form here. Now in this case, um, the 3x inside is what we call the radicand. Um, this is the index of the radicand, and of course this is the radical sign. That's it. So let's consider another example. If we have this, so this is a radical um, algebraic expression, so the entire thing is algebraic expression. Specifically, this is a radical expression um, in the sense that it follows of this form. So 4 here is the index of radicand, 8x plus 5 is an expression which is the radicand, and um, this is the radical sign. So of course, uh, for the concept of radical expression, we have the following remarks based from the definition. Okay, number 1 is I have the expression here where of course, x is the algebraic expression. Has n equals 2. Meaning to say that um, if you encounter this expression, this is the same as this. So you don't need to write 2 when the index of the radicand is 2. So it automatically is understood as there's a 2 as the index of ra the radicand on this expression. That's it. And um, number 2. For um, this one, if n is even, then x should be greater than or equal to 0. Otherwise, if x is less than 0, then this is undefined. So this is the rule for a real number system that if the index of the radicand is even, you have to make sure that the radicand should always be greater than or equal to 0. For the third remark, if you have this expression um, where your m here is a positive integer, um, yes, of course, because if it's negative, then you just have to get the reciprocal of the expression to get the positive. So without loss of generality, we will use the positive value of an integer. So if m is a positive integer given by this expression, then um, you can write this as x to the m over n. Example, uh, you'd have cube root of 4x. So the, you can write 4x raised to 1 third. That's it. So the exponent of 4x inside the radical sign is 1. Let's say I'd have uh, 4 
and inside here is 2x to the cube. So that's equal to 2x to the 2 over, I'm um, sorry, 3 over 4. There is 2 here as m. I'm um, 3 here as m rather. That's it. Of course, so since we are talking about the um, uh, radical expression, so we will have to also to learn how to simplify the radical expression. So the, the way in which we are going to simplify the radical expression is the way we have to simplify it, it, its exponent. So given that, again, we have this here, you can write that as x to the m over n. So your goal is to simplify this exponent, this fraction here. Now, the hint for us to be able to um, simplify the expression is that here. We have to simplify the radicand of the expression into the form where it raises a power m such that m divides n or n divides m. Let us recall the loss of exponent given by this. Um, so if you'd like to review um, the loss of exponent, you can check on my video for mathematical expression uploaded here in my YouTube channel. So given by this expression a, b, quantity to the n, you can actually write this as a to the n, b to the n. So technically, if you are given by this uh, radical expression x, y, z, so they have three variables here. So in this case, you can have x, y, z to the 1 over n. That means the x, y, z has an exponent 1. Uh, so the total exponent, because we have the index n, so you have 1 over n. Now, um, I can write this here as x to the 1 over n, y to the 1 over n, z to the 1 over n. That means I distribute this 1 over n exponent to each of the variable here. Okay, now how does this affect to our goal of simplifying a radical expression? In this case, uh, we will have to use the statement simplify the radicand of the expression into the form where it raises a power m such that m divides n or the other way around. Now, let us consider for example here. Uh, I think it would be better. I, I'm not going to erase that. Okay, here. Um, let us consider for example we have... Uh, cube root of uh, 9x cube y to the 6. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to assume that this 9x cube y x6 is um, just a mere one variable in which the entire exponent is 1, um, so that I can write this in this way. 9x cube y to the 6 to the 1 third. That means there is 1 here. Okay. So, which means I can distribute this uh, individually. So, I would have 9 to the 1 third. I have x cube 1 third. That's y 6 to the 1 third. So, for the loss of exponent again, um, remember that if you have a to the n raised to m, you can multiply a times uh, n times m here. So, in this case, uh, I can write 9 as uh, 3 squared, so that's 3 squared to the 1 third, and this is, but anyway, um, it, there's no effect for that, so I'll just leave it here like this instead. Um, 9 to the 1 third, um, x to the 1 third, that's x to the 3 over 3, and y to the 6 over 3. So I multiply 6 by 1 third. So therefore, I would get 9 to the 1 third. This x to 3 over 3, that's x, and y, that's y squared. So implication is the exponent of x is no longer 
f fraction, the exponent of y is no longer a fraction, so therefore I would have x y squared. This is still a fraction, so therefore I will convert back to a radical expression. So that is a uh, cube root of 9. So this is my final answer as a simplification of this. Okay, so let's consider another example here. So we have fourth root of 3x to the 6, y to the 7, z to the 5. So let us assume again that uh, the it corresponds to an exponent 1 here. So I'd have um, 3x to the 6, y to the 7, z to the 5, and this is 1 fourth. Okay, so I can distribute this as uh, 3 and 1 fourth, x and 6 over 4. So that means I multiply 6 and 1 fourth here. And um, I have y and 7 over 4, and z and 5 over 4. Okay, uh, in this case, I would have to simplify this. So that is a 3 and 1 fourth. Um, 6 and 1 fourth, I'm sorry, 6 over 4, rather. Um, I can have a 6 over 4 as 1 and 2 fourth, or that's 1 and 1 half. So that means 1 and 1 half is the same as 1 plus 1 half. So if that is 1 plus 1 half, I can write that as x times x to the 1 half. So that means if I'm going to multiply these two, I would get to add the exponent. So I have x times x to the 1 half. This one also here, that's 7, o 7 over 4, that's, oh, that's the same as 1 and 3 fourth. So I have y times y and 3 fourth. And z to the 5 over 4, so that's the same as 1 and 1 fourth. So I have 1 times z to the 1 fourth. Okay, so by this, um, if you notice, this is um, of exponent whole number. So I don't have to do anything with that, but I just have to copy because they are already safe. So I'm going to go back converting this into a radical expression. So that's um, fourth root of 3. This one here is square root of x. This one here is a uh, fourth root of uh, y cubed. This one here, that's fourth root of z. So they have the same index here, except for the x squared. So I will, can write this as x, y, z. So I have square root of x and square root of um, fourth root rather of 3y z. So this is how you simplify your radical expression. Well, um, it depends because some may not accept this kind of weird thing. Uh, for me, um, instead of writing that, I'm gonna I'm gonna change it back here, wherein your x is written as one half. So that's the same as x to the two over four. So in that way, this two over four, I can write that as fourth root of x squared. In this way, um, I can have this written as x, y, z, fourth root of 3x squared, y cubed, z. So I include the z to the group of 3y cubed, z for elegance purposes. But whatever it is, that's still the same. So if you have questions or clarification, you can comment down there on this video so that we will have a harmonious discussion of what is this all about. So, okay, now, since we are talking also with simplifying of radical expression, so this comes with the idea of the operations of radical expression. So same with the addition, which is the same as subtraction and multiplication with uh, division. So this is a uh, mathematical expression, so that means the rule will also be apl applicable for the rules of um, adding or multiplying algebraic expression. So in this case, uh, of course, for addition, you can add um, radical expression if they don't have the same variable. 
So the variable in this case includes the exponent. So let us say, for example, um, uh, x here plus fourth root of x. So you cannot add this one here because um, this one here is the same as x to the one half. This one is x to the one fourth. So they don't have the same exponent. So similarly with the algebra expression wherein you can have, you cannot add x cubed by x to the four because they have different exponent, something like that. So same what happened with the radical expression. You cannot add because they have different um, index of radicand. In that way, they result to the different exponent. That's it. Okay, now, so we will consider further examples for the operations of radical expression. So we will consider first for addition. So this is supposed to be plus here, sorry. Okay, in this case, um, you have uh, cube root of 24a and cube root of 81a. So if you notice, um, they don't have the same um, radical uh, expression inside the radical sign. So you need to simply write that first if that's possible before you can be able to perform the operation because technically they don't have the same var uh, variable. So you have 24a. Um, that's uh, raised to uh, one third, and you have 81a raised to one third. Okay, for 24a um, raised to one third, I can be able to write this as um, 2 raised to 3, so that's 8 times 3a, and that's one third plus. The 81, I can write that as 3 raised to 3, so that's uh, 27 times 3, then A raised to 1 third. Okay, so we have already know how to simplify with this one. So um, 2 to the 3 times 1 third, so that's technically 2. 3 to the 1 third, and that's A to the 1 third. And this one here is 3 to the 3 times 1 third, the... Um, you multiply 3 to the exponent 1 third, so you'll get 3 to the 1, then times 3 to the 1 third, and a to the 1 third. So if you notice, you would end up with the same variable now this time, because these 2 and 3 here will be considered in this case as now as constant. So I have 2, 3 to the 1 third, a to the 1 third, so that's cube root of 3a. And this one here is 3, and that's cube root of 3a. So in this case, they have now the same variable. So according to the rule for the algebraic expression that I have discussed on the previous videos, you can um, you just have to add the, expo the coefficient here, and then copy the corresponding variable. So therefore, I have 2 plus 3, 5, so I would get 5 times cube root of 3a. That's it. Now to solve for number 2, um, that's 10 times cube root of xyz minus 7 6 root of x squared y squared z squared plus 2 cube root of xyz. So what are we going to do is we need to simplify that again too. So um, I can have 10 cube root of xyz I would have 7, if you notice that 7, um, x, y, um, x squared, y squared, z squared, that's the same as x, y, z quantity squared. So I would have um, x, y, z quantity squared over 3. I'm sorry, it's over 6 rather. And I would have here 2 cube root of x, y, z. Now in this case, one um this one here, this is uh two over six, so that's technically one third. So therefore, I can write this as ten cube root of x y z 
I have 7 cube root of XYZ. I have 2 cube root of XYZ. So therefore, they all now have um, the same variable here. So this one will be considered as variable. This here and this here. So you just have to add corresponding coefficients. So 10 minus 7, you get 3. Plus 2, you get 5. That's 5 and you copy the corresponding variable. So this is your final answer. That's it. Now for number 3, so you'd have um, 5 times 4th root of x to the 4, z to the 4. So I can write this um, here as 5 times x to the 4, z squared, quantity 1 fourth here. And I have 6x, and that's square root of z, minus 8z, square root of z. Um, this is the same as 5. x to the 4, then you multiply 4 to the 1 fourth, so that's technically x. x. So 4 over 4, it's 1. And you have z, that's 2 over 4. Plus here, um, just have to copy here in this side. And so you have 5x z to the 4, uh, I'm sorry, z to the 2 the, uh, z to the 2 over 4 is actually z to the 1 half. So that's a square root of z here. And this is 6x square root of z minus 8 square root of z. Now if you notice, um, they almost have the same but technically not. Um, the only diff the only same variable here is this one. This is way different because it doesn't have a variable x here, unlike this. So therefore, you can only add these two terms here and leave this one as is. So you'll get uh, 5 plus, um, 5x plus 6x, so you'll get 11x, then copies this, and just copy this one here because you cannot do anything about it anymore. So this is your final answer. Okay, so the same rule applies to the multiplication of radical expression. So the multiplication of radical expression, again, since it's actually um, the set, the subset of the sets of um, algebraic expression, so it follows the same rule with that. So multiplication is when you just you can multiply everything. Like you just have if they have the same base, then you can add the corresponding exponents. If they don't have the same base, then just copy both of them, something like that. Okay, so to, for you to be able to understand the basic rule of it, you can check back on my video about the mathematical expression. This time, I'll give you an example as application for that. Here, um, for number one, you have to multiply the expression for um, square root of xy you have 5 square root of xz and 6 square root of yz. So if you notice, they have the same um, index of radicand here. So you just have to copy every um, the index here. So 4 times 5 times 6, you get um, 120. And so you copy the radical sign because they, they have the same index of radicand. And then multiply the expression inside the radical sign. So x squared y times xz, that x squared z, x squared yz, times yz, that's x squared y squared z squared. So simplifying this, you'd have x, y, z. That's it. For this, number two, um, this only works here because they have the same index of radical and then we will um, apply this later so I can have a uh, cube root of x y z squared multiplied by this because we haven't touched anything on this yet <coughs> okay 
Now I can write this as x to the one third, y to the one third, z to the two third, and so this is x to the one half and y to the one half. So there's no problem at all because this is the just an ordinary algebraic. I'm sorry, yeah, ordinary algebraic expression wherein if they have the same base, you add the exponent. So x, I can write this here as x to the one third plus one half. So that's one third plus one half. I have y equals one third plus one half. I have z two third. Okay, one third plus one half. So that's five over six. So um x to the 5 over 6 y to the 5 over 6 z to the 2 third i want this 2 third to be the same fraction having a corresponding denominator of 6 so that means 2 third becomes 4 over 6 so i can instead of writing 2 third here I'm going to replace that by 4 over 6. In that way, I can just put this as x to the 5, y to the 5, z to the 4, and that's 6 root of them. That's it. Now, let's go solving for number 3. So they both have the same index of radicand here. Okay. I think they it's actually the same number one. Sorry, my bad. I think I prepared another um problem here. I was not able to type it later um earlier. So I'll just replace this by this. Uh fourth root of xy multiplied by I'm sorry not fourth root that's um three square root of xy multiplied by five cube root of xz okay so in this case I multiply this here so I would have um fifteen this is x to the one half y to the one half <clears throat> x to the one third z to the one third so nothing's wrong with that i can just um use this as 15. x to the one half x to the one third so that's um x to the five over six so five over six y to the one half i'll change that with a denominator of six here so that's y to the three six and that's z to the 2, 6. So I can write 15 sixth root of x to the 5 y cubed z squared. That's it. Okay, so I guess that's all for now. So I have explained to you the what is really a radical expression, the formal definition, its concept, and how to simplify that, and how we add and uh, multiply the radical expression but if you notice in our example when we add an uh, multiply exp um, radical expression the expression inside the radical sign is if you think that is monomial so the question is what happens if it's binomial if it's trinomial and so on so we will find this out on our next video so for now this is all all for um the basic of this radical expression so um just the simplification and the addition and multiplication of radical expression provided that the inside expression inside the radical sign is a monomial so thank you so much guys for watching and uh again for those who are new to my channel you can click down there there and subscribe for you to be able to um, get updated with that and um for those who have already subscribed thank you for the support and have a great day, everyone. Bye for now.